Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, checking out Minnesota football with, of course, the early signing period almost coming to a close. And, of course, bowl preparation for the Auburn Tigers. We got Daniel House on the line from Score North. You can also catch him on at Gopher Hole as well. Daniel, how are you doing today? Doing well. Uh, it's National Signing Day tomorrow, so all the finishing touches going on the content. and Just posted a huge recruiting guide today, so lots of stuff for people to read about. Well, let's get right to it, Daniel, because Minnesota has not uh, traditionally been one of those uh, key targets uh, in Big Ten circles in regards to attracting the best talent. But P.J. Fleck is quickly changing that, making it a destination location for people to at least on the high end of the recruiting scale, give it a look because of the intrigue of the rise of the program, his personality, new facilities, a lot going on there at Minnesota. Uh, Just your thoughts about the current class as it stands right now. Well, I just look at the whole process of P.J. Fleck and his recruiting early on. He came to Minnesota and he said, OK, got to fix the wide receiver position. There's no depth there. So he started to slowly add talent. Per Thotman Bell in that first cycle and then Rashad Bateman, who burst onto the scene. He had four healthy linemen when he came in for spring ball. It was really hard to do drills. So he knew the next cycle, the first full one with him, he needed to get offensive line depth in there. So he went to IMG Academy. He landed Daniel Falele and Curtis Dunlap, both key starters and contributors on this team. So every year he's emphasized a different area. Last cycle, it was the defensive tackles, getting Rashad Cheney, a guy that they pulled away from Alabama and Georgia, and then adding uh, continued defensive tackle talent through the transfer market with Micah Dutreadway, Keontae Shad, who was a Juco transfer. Uh, not only that, but I see D'Angelo Carter being an underrated player, a freshman from the last class that developed. I really liked his tape, uh, and I've heard good things about him and his uh, growth as a player. So the defensive tackle position was the big emphasis. And then they also added uh, defensive end talent with Devion Harris and MJ Anderson. Both of those guys have been uh, developing behind the scenes. But this year, the big emphasis has been to continue building that defensive line from the inside out. And I see the early additions with Gage Keys, uh, Ohio defensive end that I really like. Minnesota has added a lot of wingspan on their defensive line. They look, they're looking for explosive pass rushers with upside uh, and length. And Gage Keys is one of those guys. He's Really good basketball player uh, in high school as well. Uh, I wrote about him in the breakdown. Danny Strigow, he's a local recruit uh, from Orono, Minnesota. He's a wrestler. I really like that background with him because of the leverage, the balance, the hand technique, things like that. Uh, It's an added bonus to have someone who's a high caliber wrestler. So I see this team building the defensive line from the inside out. And they just got Jalen Logan Redding, too, from uh, flipping from Missouri to Minnesota. He had some schools like Texas in on him. Uh, Missouri was committed since September 2nd, another player with that similar uh, prototype that they're looking for at the defensive line position. And then at linebacker, they've continued to add versatile guys with athletic upside, really good in coverage. I see Cody Lindenberg, a kid from Anoka, Minnesota, always wanted to play for the Gophers. They were able to land him. Got to see him in an on-field workout, really impressed with his coverage skills. Another guy with athleticism. Um, And then Jaquandis Burns, who they were able to Land He decommitted from Ole Miss when Lane Kiffin uh, was hired. So now he uh, decided to flip to, to Minnesota. So that was another really great get from IMG Academy. Uh, Lucas Finnessy, he played defensive back in Wisconsin, was a finalist for the Jim Leonard Award. He'll play at linebacker at Minnesota, another guy with length and athleticism. I love the way he moves. Uh, he's he's going to be someone that Minnesota really wants to add team speed to their defense. And that's kind of what I've noticed, uh, particularly with this cycle. And then Someone like Octavian Brown, top player in the class from St. Louis, kind of in between uh, on the athletic testing. I, I don't know what position he's going to play. We'll see if he if he adds some weight, maybe goes to defensive end, plays linebacker. But again, length and athleticism, and then they'll figure out where those guys are going to play later. But I like the versatility and the team speed that they're adding on defense. And then some people in the back end as well, Abner Dubar. Uh, safety with incredible testing numbers. Again, just trying to get these guys that are athletes. Jalen Glaze at the cornerback position. He's from uh, Florida. Victor Pless, another guy with testing metrics. You're just trying to add all these guys that have athletic ability, and then you'll figure out where you're going to put them later. I also particularly noted Michael Dixon. He's a very, uh, very talented safety as well. Uh, Someone that they, they really have to try to get ready for that safety position if Antoine Winfield Jr. declares early. So, 
Uh, that's another position. So really a defensive heavy class in my eyes, but the wide receiver room too is, is continuing to add talent. Brown is the uh, 22nd rated uh, outside linebacker in the country, fifth rated player in the state out of North St. Louis, Missouri. Daniel, is there actually a player out there who decommitted because of Lane Kiffin? I thought the kids loved Lane Kiffin. I thought they were all drawn to him. Yeah, Jaquandus Burns. He just did not want to, didn't want to deal with Lane Kiffin. I guess he, he, uh, when they, when they got rid of the previous couch, it was like, uh, I'm opening up my recruiting, and then Minnesota came up on a visit this weekend and and really liked it. So Minnesota has some playing time to go around there with guys like Kamal Martin and Thomas Barber uh, graduating, and they're continuing to to build that depth up uh, and try to get some competitive depth on the roster uh, at all spots. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Gophers. We've got Daniel House on the line. You can catch him at uh, Gopher Hole and also at Score North. Christmas is coming very soon. Shop Amazon using the link in the description section below. It's a class that rated a 10th in the nation or 10th in the Big Ten, 45th in the nation, according to the 247 composite last year. Maybe some dividends are paying off if the numbers are accurate in regards to now 32nd in the nation at this stage of the game for 2020. So, of course, there are key leans out there in regards to leaning um, Minnesota's way or maybe somebody that they've got to pull into the fold. Who's that handful of players, maybe two or three guys, whatever the number is, that would be tremendous gets to close in and get that signed um, on the dotted line here in the next 24 hours? Well, John Joyner from the East Coast defensive end, currently committed to Boston College, fired up his tape, and I was really impressed. I was like, wow, uh, this guy has a chance to be a really special player. Again, another uh, uh, prospect with the testing metrics that you're looking for, that length and explosiveness that Minnesota has always uh, tried to add to their defensive line, specifically at defensive end. They have a lot to sell there because they're looking for pass rushers. I think one of the weaknesses with this team this year was the fact that they really couldn't get consistent pressure from the front seven without blitzing. Their 92nd and front seven havoc, 12% rate, uh, among the all the entire front seven. So I see defensive end being that one position that they need to get. So honestly, I feel like Jod Joyner uh, would be a great get. Maybe looking at the punter position, uh, there's some targets out there to potentially bolster that area. Uh, we'll see what Minnesota does to round out this class. But overall, I really, uh, really like – we talked about the defense and the additions, the versatility, the athleticism, the team speed on that side of the ball – but look at what they've done on offense to Kai Thomas, uh, one of the top players in Kansas, setting the record books. Number two in Kansas State football history in rushing yards. Number one in the uh, city of uh, Topeka, a Gatorade player of the year uh, in that region. So I see Kai Thomas being someone that in a loaded uh, running back room with, with uh, Mohamed Ibrahim, Bryce Williams, who didn't play much, Cam Wiley, Trey Potts. Now you add Kai Thomas into the mix. Uh, the Gophers are just consistently producing uh, running back talent. And Kai could be someone that gets some time. Daniel Jackson, wide receiver from Kansas as well. Dynamic vertical threat, uh, really, really stretched defenses. And another guy that they were able to go to Kansas, a top uh, top three player in that state, uh, and continuing to bolster that wide receiver room with Jonathan Mann, local recruit. He was the first commit in this cycle. Uh, really physical uh, wide receiver who's great in the red zone. Uh, continuing to improve as a route runner, getting better every year. Uh, Justin Bellito from uh, out east, really great route runner. I like him. Uh, and Dakota Thomas down in Georgia. They went down to his satellite camp and found him. He could be the he could be a low low key sleeper in this class. They he missed his junior year with an injury. They went down, and watched him in a satellite camp. He started to get interest late. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the the Rashad Bateman recruiting process where they went down to the satellite camp. They offered him early. He stayed committed. And then they, they kind of found a diamond in the rough. So keep an eye on him. But, uh, and then Douglas and million, uh, the wide receiver from Florida, who they beat out Miami and LSU for another really solid, get uh, dynamic player, especially after the catch uh, and his route running is solid too. So wide receiver is becoming a position that Minnesota is recruiting at another level. It used to be like the running backs, but now it's the it's the receivers. It's becoming a destination. And Daniel, of course, with PJ Fleck, with his personality, with the energy, with the salesmanship, I, I can't imagine how that guy ever loses a recruit. 
<laughs> yeah, when when a recruits walk into PJ Flex office, I can't even imagine. Like he he just he has this energy about him. He knows all these facts about the guys. Like he really digs in to learn about the player. He really he spends a lot of time talking about how they they de recruit players while they're recruiting them. And it's, and it's, it's interesting because it'd be like, okay, this guy clearly doesn't fit what we want to do. They're doing background work, learning about them they're, They They want to add guys that are going to live up to the standard of what he's trying to do. And it's not for everybody. It, it's a high standard in the classroom, high standard on the field, high standard in the community. Uh, he's looking for those well-rounded players and uh, that can really contribute in all the areas that, that make a program successful. Uh, and when recruits come in, they obviously have to be impressed with PJ Fleck and, and what he has to offer.